Well, hello, and welcome back to our flipped classroom. Tonight's topic is called the composition of functions. So let's go ahead and get that titled in our notebook. You can put the date at the top as well. Here's our definition of composition of functions. Combining the rules of two functions. So let's carefully copy this diagram down. We have our input x, and you can put this arrow to f. The output from f becomes the input to g, and then we have our final output. So this is how a composition works. You're basically going to put something in to a function f. You're going to get an answer out called the output, and you're going to take that output and put it into g. And then you'll have your final answer. So basically you're just taking something and substituting it into a function, taking that answer and substituting it into something else. Now here's the notation we're going to use. And let's be real careful how we copy this down and then we'll put it into English. So you see the G, the parenthesis, the F, the parenthesis, X. Here's how we read this in mathematical lingo. And again, let's make sure we get this copied down correctly. This reads G of F of X. Do you notice these ofs? Every time I see this parenthesis, I'm saying the word of. G of F of X. Now I can write this in another way. And again, we'll copy this down. F of g of x. And again, we'll put it into English. So if I write it this way, f parenthesis g parenthesis x, as I say it, I'm reading f of g of x. Now, there's another little notation that you're going to need to be familiar with, and they use this symbol, composed, and it means the same thing. As I read it, and again, we'll put it in English, this is reading, what I see first, f of g of x. So I'm going to say f of g of x. So two ways to say, say the same thing. I could go the other way. This is red. g of f of x. This symbol here means composed or composition. So let's dive right into our first example. Again, we'll need to copy this down. Given f of x equals x squared minus 5 and g of x equals 2x plus 3, find the values for each of the following. So let me give you example 1. Let's say they say f of g of 2. We want to start with the innermost part. Okay, and a lot of times we say we're going to work backwards. So I'm going to start on the right side, and the first thing I see is the number 2. So here's how we want you to write it out. We're going to say 2 goes into g, and that output goes into f. So again, I'm working backwards. I'm starting on the right, and I'm going to the left. So I'm starting with 2, substituting that into g. I'm taking that output and substituting it into f. So the first thing I want to find is 2 into g, and of course, that's read g of 2. So I'm going to find g of 2, which is going to be 2 times 2 plus 3. I'm picking the g function and substituting 2 into x. The output I get, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Now I'm going to take g's output and substitute that into f. So I'm going to find f of 7. So I'm going to plug 7 into function f. Notice when I substitute, I'm going to use parentheses. I'm substituting 7 in, the squared goes outside, minus 5. So I have 49 minus 5 is equal to 44. Let's try another example. We'll use the same functions. We'll just change the number we're finding. So let's say we want g of f of 3. Okay, so we're saying this is composition. We're going to work backwards. We're going to start on the right and move to the left. So I'm going to start with 3, and I'm going to substitute that into the term right next to it. So 3 is going to go into f, and I'm going to substitute that then into g. So again, I'm just going backwards. 3 into f into g. And now we'll write it in function notation. So the first thing I'm going to find is f of 3. So I'm going to go up to my f function and carefully substitute 3 in and use parentheses. 3 squared minus 5. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So 3 was my input, I'm getting an output of 4. So now I'm going to take my output and substitute that into g. So now I'm finding g of 4. 
So I'll just carefully grab my G function and substitute with parentheses in. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3, I get 11. All right, let's try another one. Again, f composed of g of negative 3, or f of g of negative 3. Can't stress enough, we're working backwards. We're going to write it out in notation first. I'm taking negative 3. Have you figured out who we're substituting into yet? Just go backwards. The next term you see after negative 3 is g. And I'm going to take that answer and plug it into the next term I see, which is f. Okay, so we'll carefully write it out. I'm finding g of negative 3. And again, when I substitute, I'm just going to use parentheses. 2 times negative 3 plus 3. So that's negative 6 plus 3 is equal to negative 3. And now I'm going to take that output and substitute it into f. So f of negative 3 is equal to, and I just got to scroll and find my function, um, x squared minus 5, so I'm going to say this is negative 3 squared minus 5. Notice I use parentheses again. If I square a negative, I'm multiplying by itself, so I get a positive 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. Now there's no rule that says you have to use f and g every time. Notice this one says f of f of negative 1. So again, I'm going to write out my rule starting backwards. I'm going to take negative 1, and I'm going to store that or substitute that into f, and then I'm going to take that output and substitute that into f again. And that's fine. All you have to do is read the rule and write it down. So I'm going to find f of negative 1 first. So substituting with parentheses, negative 1 squared minus 5. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1 minus 5. I get negative 4. So I'm going to take this output and substitute it, look, back into f. So now I'm finding f of negative 4. Watch those parentheses, negative 4 squared minus 5. So that gets me 16 minus 5, which is 11. And there you have it, simple function composition. Now we can get more creative in the ways that we ask it. Instead of giving two functions written out, we can give you the two functions in tables. So take a moment, you can pause it, and copy down these two tables. All right, now that you're back, let's take notice that this is function f, and it's clearly labeled here, and this is function g. So let's take question one, and let's find f of g of three. Okay, and it works the same way. I'm gonna write out my little rule. I'm gonna work backwards. So first I see three, and then I see g, so three goes into g, and that output goes into f. Okay, so I'm just writing the rule backwards. So I need to evaluate g of 3. So it's simple. I'm just going to go to the g table. I'm going to input. Input means my x value into 3. And when I input 3, I get an output of 4. So my g of 3 is equal to 4. Now I'm going to take that answer, of course, and substitute it into f. So now I need f of 4. Just make sure you look at the correct table. So I'm going to go to the f function. I'm going to input a 4, and again, input means the x value. Input a 4, and my output is a 6. And there you have it, f of g of 3. Let's go ahead and try another one using the same table. Let's try f of f of 3. So again, I'm going to write my rule out working backwards. 3 is going to go into the next function I see is f, and that output's going to go back into f, it says. All right, I'm going to have to scroll down a little here. So I'm going to first find f of 3. So I'm going to go to my f table. I'm going to input a 3, and my output is a 5. Now I'm going to take that output and put it back into f, it says. So f of 5, again I'm going to go to my f, I'm going to input a 5, and I get an output of 7. Alright, you give this one a whirl. Same tables. Um, go ahead, pause it, try it on your own, and then turn it back on and compare and see if you got it correct. Alright, now that you're back, hopefully you're set up, said f, 
I'm sorry, 5 into f into g. Okay, so again, this is read g of f of 5. I'm going to find f of 5 first. So I'm going to go to my f table. I'm going to input a 5, and I get an output of 7. And I'm going to plug that now into g. So I'm going to find g of 7. So I'm going to go to my g table, input a 7, and hopefully you got an output of 12. Now besides giving you a function um, and giving you a table, we could also give you a graph. So I don't think you need to copy these graphs down. Uh, we'll just do the same idea, just take the examples down. So we'll start with f of g of 0. So again, I'm working backwards. I'm going to start with my rightmost term, which is a 0. I'm going to substitute that into g because I see that next when I go this way. And then I'm going to substitute that into f. So again, this is read f of g of 0. So I'll first evaluate g of 0. So now just take note, this is the f graph, this is the g graph. I'm going to input a 0 into g. So if I go to 0 on the x and I look up, I can see it has a height of 1. So now I'm going to take my output and substitute that into f. So now I need to find f of 1. So I'll go to my f graph, I'll input a 1, so I'm going to go to 1 on the x-axis and find the height of the graph. The height of the graph is at negative 2. Let's try another one. So this is red, g of f of 2. And again, we're going to work backwards, so I'm going to say 2 goes into f, and that output goes into g. Okay, so I'm first going to find f of 2. So I'm going to go to my f graph. I'm going to input a 2 on the x-axis, and you'll notice the height of the graph right there is equal to 0. So now I'll take that output, and I'll find g of 0. So I'm going to go to my g graph. I'm going to find 0 as my input, and I'm going to look to see that this graph has a height of 1. So f, I'm sorry, g of f of 2 is equal to 1. All right, we'll do one last one with the graphs. Um, so again, this says g of g of negative 1, or g composed of g of negative 1. And I'm just going to write down my pattern working backwards. I'm going to do negative 1 into g, take that output, and I'm going to plug it back into g. So the first thing I'm going to find is g of negative 1. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, I'm going to go to my g graph, find an input of negative 1, and say, okay, the height of the graph is positive 1. Now I'm going to take that output I got of 1 and plug it back into g. So I'm going to get g of 1, go back to that g graph, find x equals 1, and the height is an output of 2. All right, let's take a look at another example. Given f of x equals x squared minus 4 and g of x equals 2x minus 5. Let's find f of g of x. All right, so let's write out the rule from right to left. Now notice we're not plugging a number in this time like 2, 3, or 4. We're substituting x in. So I need x into g, and we'll take that output and put it into f. So again, just write the rule down right to left. So the first thing I need to find is g of x. Now again, I'm not substituting a number, and this is actually really nice. Do you know what g of x is? One of these examples, and right here, it says what g of x is. So this piece is already done for you. g of x is 2x minus 5. Basically, the answer is sitting in front of you. Now you're going to take this whole output and substitute it into f. So now I need to find f of 2x minus 5. Okay. So I'm going to replace all my x's with 2x minus 5. So I'm going to say this is equal to 2x minus 5 squared minus 4 times x, so minus 4 times 2x minus 5. And now I just need to simplify this. So this takes a few seconds. When there's no numbers involved, you're going to get variables in your answer. So I'm going to have to square this which means you can solve it any way you want. I like to use the distributive property, or some people FOIL, or some people like that tabular method. Whatever works for you. I'm going to say this is 4x squared 
minus 10x minus 10x plus 25. These combine, so I'm going to say I get 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. Now be careful, you have to take this negative 4 and distribute. So I'm going to get minus 8x plus 20. And then lastly, I can combine any like terms. I've got a plain old 4x squared. A negative 20x and a negative 8x make negative 28x. And a positive 25 and a positive 20 make a positive 45. So you notice my final answer is not a numerical answer. It's not a single constant number. Um, it's a function in terms of x. So using the same functions, we'll now find g of f of x. So again, working backwards, I'm going to start with my x, input that into f, take that output, and put it into g. So the first thing I'm finding, of course, is f of x. And again, it's really nice. You don't have to do anything. They tell you what f of x is. All you have to do is copy it down. f of x is x squared minus 4x. Now I'm going to take that output that I just got and substitute that into g. So now I need to find g of x squared minus 4x. So I'm going to take this whole quantity and put it in any place I see an x. So 2 times x squared minus 4x minus 5. So I get 2x squared minus 8x minus 5. And again, there you have it, all done. Alright, in this example we're going to work backwards. I'm going to tell you the function f of g of x is equal to the quantity 2x minus 5 cubed. And your goal is to be able to identify who g of x is and who f of x is. Okay, So basically what I'm hinting at is g of x is sitting inside of f. So can you look at the function who's sitting inside who? Well, I see a 2x minus 5 and I see a quantity cubed. Who is inside of who? Would you agree that 2x minus 5 is sitting inside the cubed function? So I would say g of x is 2x minus 5, and f of x is x cubed. Now you can always check and see if you're right, and I'll show you in a moment. But again, I'm hinting at the 2x minus 5 is in the parentheses, so it's the inner function. And you can see g of x is in the parentheses, so that's the inner function. And the outside function is something cubed. That's why I called it x cubed. And here's what I mean by checking. All I'm going to say is if I want to check, I'm going to take x into g into f. So I'm first going to find g of x, which I just said is 2x minus 5. And I'm going to plug that into f of x, which I just said is x minus or x cubed. So I would get 2x minus 5 cubed, which is exactly what the original problem was. Let me give you one more example. Let's say g of f of x is equal to the cubed root of x minus 6. Can you tell me who the inner function is and who the outer function is? Who is sitting inside who? Well, f of x is the inner function because it's inside the g of x. So I want to be clear, f of x is the inside function, g is the outer function. And if you look here, who's inside of who? Well, I would say x minus 6 is inside the cubed root. So I'm going to say that the inner function, my f of x, is the x minus 6. And the outer function, the guy outside, is the cubed root of x. And again, you can always check, just like we did in the previous example, by finding x into f into g. Well, that does it for tonight on composition of functions. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.